Why don't you go ahead and talk about raising your family on the farm? Uh, we were married and had lived in Ogden City in a little apartment for three months, and John, my, my husband's father called and asked if he'd like to be involved in farming. I went to work at the grocery store one morning. When I come home, he'd move me to Hooper. We moved in the house we live in now. It's grown bigger with all the kids we've put in it, but it's the same home that we moved into 57 years ago. And we love the home, except that we need more space all the time. But we raised 11 children, and every one of them are the greatest there are in the world. They are, they have responded and they have helped, and you uh, would not believe how hard they worked. We always said that we had, uh, we didn't know if we had the farm to keep the kids busy or the, the kids to keep the farm going, but we needed both. And we always told them, we kept them so busy, they were too tired to be naughty. So they've been good children and responded to everything. Uh, we've all got out in the fields and worked. They've ridden in the trucks while we drive to harvest crops. They've always cooperated and, and worked with us and done a good job in supporting the family. They knew they were important to us and they knew that, that without them we wouldn't succeed. We milked cows for a lot of years, which brought a, a good income to our lives. And then we extended our farm and bought one up in Idaho, hoping to expand our operation and make it possible for some of the children to be a part of it. Uh, that gave us more adventures than we were ready for. <laughs> if we start on that one, we could go on forever. There's so many things that we were protected and guided and survived in a primitive atmosphere that didn't, we didn't have a home, we had a trailer. It was uh, very sagebrush when we went out and we had to uh, disc it under and then grow crops on it and haul them back to Hooper to our animals here. So it was a great time of unity and distress and worry and concern, but we survived it and made it happen. And after our children were grown and married well and have families of their own, we realized that we would like to serve missions. And because I'd worked in a bakery, we got the blessing of being called to go to India to establish a bakery. What a surprise. And uh, our son said, I think you read that wrong, Mom. It's Indiana. But it was India. It was a fascinating country with so many unusual things and traditions and and ways of life and ceremonies that it was really charming. One of the things that was really an experience that I remember and will always cherish is that we were able to work with disabled children in a facility and it was so well taken care of, sterilized every night. A hundred children lived there and two hundred more came every day, so three hundred. And we baked bread to, to provide for them and for their teachers and they were taught very kindly and small classes, about eight kids per class. We had the opportunity to go to the government hospital, which was poorly taken care of and had very limited doctors and nurses, so families pretty well took care of their children. We were on the ninth floor of the building with the children that had some form of cancer, and it was heartbreaking to see, but what a joy it was to be able to take them from their sick bed, even though they had their IVs hooked to their arm, that they could come in a little room that we painted and decorated and teach them English and singing and dancing and, and coloring and creating crafts, and they were so happy to do it. I remember one little boy was about 11, and he was, was sick one day on his bed, and he said to me, Sister, do you pray? And I said, Yes, I do, Ganesh. Uh, and he said, will you pray for me? And it was a tender moment for me that I said, I sure will, Ganesh. I saw him later on, and he had re got over his illness, at least at that period of time. We were able to do a lot of things for the children that they couldn't do for themselves, and to rejoice in that. Our best friend was our camera. Everybody liked to have their picture taken. Nobody has cameras there, so when we were able to take a camera to the hospital and take photos of the children for their mothers to have a memory of their child, uh, the part was that we couldn't get the pictures back fast enough before some left and some passed away. So we got a Polaroid. Then we got people from all over the hospital <laughs> coming in to have their picture taken. But it was truly a joy to have something for them as a memory. We were able to go in the hospital and paint it and buy new mattresses and beds and provide entertainment for the children in these rooms and clean out a lot of the 
junk rooms that they had stored things in that harbored a lot of uncomfortable things. But it was a joy to see, have a chance to brighten somebody's day and be able to share with them the joys of life.